I've been trying to film the beginning of this episode, but it's summer and the ice cream truck is back in full force. He's been circling this block over and over again and I think now he's just parked outside. But for this episode, I was looking to explore a few resources that I've been playing with online, as well as my mail. I have a lot of mail and I'm excited to explore it with all of you. So for this episode, let's have a chat on hashtag Philately. I'm gonna have a word with this guy. <laughs> So a quick update on the channel before we get started. Recently, we surpassed 100 videos and 2 million views along with 20,000 subscribers, which yes, I know it's not really a big deal in the YouTube space, but it's still a big deal. So thank you so much for all of you and your support. And of course, for subscribing, if you're not yet subscribed, follow these instructions, click on that subscribe button and um, join the community. Um, so I wanted to discuss three online resources that I've been playing with at the moment. Uh, the first is an app, it's called Stamp Identifier, and you can download it for free onto your smartphone. It's powered by Colnect, which I'm sure most of you already are familiar with. Colnect is an online catalog that's really crowdsourced for its information. Um, volunteers maintain Colnect and upload images as well as details about various stamps. And you can use the Colnect platform for a number of collectible items that you may be interested in from bottle caps to transit tickets, coins and more. But the stamp component of Colnect is pretty well done and I use it, I leverage it for a number of my videos already. And you can also use the platform uh, to swap and upload your collection. Now the Stamp Identifier app works with Colnex database and identifies stamps using the camera on your smartphone. It sounds a little too good to be true. I actually tried this app about a year ago or so and um, it was terrible when I tried it out. I think I tried 15, 20 different stamps and maybe got a hit on two of them if I was lucky. But they've recently updated it, uh, especially the algorithm, and from the little bit that I've played with it, I have been incredibly impressed with it. So I wanna put it to a test and try out maybe 10 stamps that I will pull out of our good old stamp box from the episodes and see what the accuracy is, see how many it actually gets right. What's great about it is that it will take you to the Colnect page for that stamp if it's accurate and that'll give you a number of details. And so if you're working with a stamp collection and you come across stamps that you have no idea about, want to learn something about, maybe it's the date, maybe it is the country that issued it, you should be able to use this app. Fingers crossed that it works really well. So I pulled out 10 stamps out of the box with a variety of different countries from Iran, India, Colombia. Uh, I've got some UK as well as a US stamp. Now the app has a clever little feature that actually squares up the stamp for you and helps you to align it correctly before it actually goes searching in the database. So I'm just gonna try on this first one here, Colombia, it's a, it's a coffee stamp. And uh, as you'll see, it matches up quite nicely, searching and bam. Now it's brought up Coffee Harvest from Colombia, uh, issued 1956. 24th of July. This is kind of a game changer. Um, and maybe it takes a little bit of the fun out of trying to identify a stamp, but if you do get stuck, this might be able to help you. So let's give it another go with this Nederland stamp. And it's kind of struggling on this one. I have a feeling that the postmark might be responsible for it. But I can't actually take a picture. Ah! Pulled it up, gave me a selection of stamps, and the very first one is the Nederland stamp from 1995, 100 cent. That's another success. That's two out of two. Let's go for three in a row. This one is unused, I believe, and it brought me to a selection of different Iranian stamps, probably from mostly from the same set. 
and the very first one is the right one that's recommended it even shows me what the watermark should look like 1976 the Shah Abbas Kabir Dam all right three out of three here we go here's the first problem that's experiencing so it didn't get the Sandy Hook lighthouse at least first go here possibly because it's on piece it's actually on a piece of paper that's throwing off the imagery so I'm gonna try again and try and crop it myself which might help it a bit got me the lighthouses and we have our first fail so I'm kind of surprised it didn't get the Sandy Hook lighthouse couple components with the Sandy Hook Lighthouse is that it's on a piece of paper and it has a cancellation but that's one Okay, so there we go, eight out of 10, which is 80% and is quite impressive. Yes, this is a sample size of just 10 stamps. So for me, it's 80%, maybe it will be similar for you. Definitely give it a go. And if you are using this app, let me know in the comments and let the other uh, viewers know whether or not you're enjoying using it or whether you find it uh, useful. I don't use real catalogs like Scott or Stanley Gibbons. I find them too expensive and I don't really have a use for them in my style of collecting. Uh, but I use resources such as Colnect and other sites to help me get enough information I need to satisfy my collecting style. This app is very cool in my opinion. It's something that I wished I had 20 years ago when I was a young boy trying to figure out what page to put a stamp on because I couldn't read the language I couldn't see what country it was from and it might take a bit of the fun out of the hobby Especially if you enjoy the detective work around trying to identify a particular stamp that you come across You don't have to use this app all the time. In fact, I'm probably just going to use it when I get stumped So give it a go and let me know your thoughts. Okay, and next up is the Museum of Philately It's an online platform or website as well as an app that is free to download. And you may be familiar with the Museum of Philately if you attended the virtual Stampex because they had a presence there. Now, the concept of the Museum of Philately is to try and bring together philatelic collections, collectors, and other rarities. And this is something that we've kind of been exploring a bit on the channel recently. The idea that it's not just about the stamp and the history of a stamp, but also about the provenance of the stamp, where the stamp has been, what collections it's been part of, and about the collectors themselves, and their collections, and what they've collected and assembled together. The Museum of Philately is celebrating this concept of the collection. And you may have an important collection that you want to preserve, even if you're about to let it go, you can go ahead and capture it in the Museum of Philately, and you can go view other people's collections, including any of your peers or famous philatelists from the past. Now, I've downloaded the app and I'm using the app on my smartphone. Like I said, that is a free app. However, it's probably easier for me to just show you uh, with a screen recording from my desktop. On the main page of the Museum of Philately, you can see that you can browse through different collections, rarities, collectors, uh, look through the experts, and they have a blog as well. This is curated content at its finest. You can scroll through the various collections and come across something that may pique your curiosity, uh, might be something that you're interested in. For instance, if I click on this Greece, fabrication and postal usage of large Hermes heads, Paris printings, you can click on that and learn about the collector himself. There's a bit of a description and pages upon pages of the collection that you can look through at your own pace. 
You can also see the listings of the medals that have been won for it and any highlighted items that you should definitely look into. Of course, you can actually sort through the various rarities as well as the collectors. And this gives you the listing of collectors that you may be curious about. Anyone from King George V to Philip von Ferrari, uh, Arthur Hind, and somebody that I didn't actually know was a collector, Anatoly Karpov, who you would know as the Russian chess grandmaster and world chess champion. Of course, he had quite an extensive collection of chess stamps as well as Belgian and Belgian Congo stamps. Uh, he was known for his Belgian collection. And the seller of his collection was David Feltman, the auction house that is actually the driver behind this museum of philately. Uh, by the way, I'm not paid by them or anybody for these shout outs of their various tools from Stamp Identifier and Museum of Philately and the Discord channel that are coming up here. Uh, this is just something that I'm exploring and I'm looking also for your feedback. Definitely check it out. You can go to the website museumofphilately.com as well as download the free app. Also, they have a monthly newsletter that you can definitely subscribe to. I'll leave that link in the video description along with the links to the platform. And if you have an interesting, unique or award-winning collection that you'd like to have uploaded onto the Museum of Philately to show others as well as preserve on your own, uh, you can absolutely reach out to them and have it reviewed and placed on the Museum of Philately. It is free to have your collection up there. Okay, and the final thing that I'd like to talk about is Discord. It is a platform where you can have a conversation with people that have similar interests to you. Uh, it's a place for community building and a place to really just hang out and chat. And I typically don't like those kinds of things like Reddit or any kind of chat rooms, but I have been introduced to a Discord channel or server that is specific to stamp collecting and is run by a really fun group of people. And I've been getting into some great conversations and really enjoyed the hanging out aspect of it. Now this is of course available on discord.com as well as an app that you can download. Some of you might already be familiar with Discord because it's more popular with the gaming world, um, music and other things. But there is, like I said, a stamp channel that is just dedicated to philately. Now you can easily set up an account with Discord and log in for free, uh, but you do need to be invited into the specific server that is dedicated to philately. And that server's name is the International Philatelic Promoters. Like I said, it's a, a group of very fun uh, people from around the world that enjoy philately. Also, keep in mind that this is a site or a server that is maintained by admins. So they do monitor the chat to make sure that it is appropriate and safe for everyone to have a discussion. I've been enjoying myself and I will be putting an invite link for anyone interested in joining the channel. It'll be in the video description. But let me just give you a quick tour of it. When you walk into the server, and this isn't a, a tutorial on Discord in general, but this particular server, you'll see that there's everyone on the right hand side that may or may not be online at this given time, uh, but you can take a look at their status that is part of this community. You'll see that there are various channels along the left here that you can access within the server. So you can look through the rules, uh, you can look at new announcements, you can check out arrivals when you check into the server for the first time, you are to introduce yourself and there's an introductions page so you can check that out and the new people that have shown up on the server and are announcing themselves, they also announce what they collect, um, what their interests are and get assigned a role within the server. Those roles could be anything from astrophilately collector to Africa collector, Asia collector and so on. I have the uh, I have the role of philatelic influencer, so I kind of feel special. But yeah, you can also see on the left here the grouping of channels where all the discussion really takes place. So you can have general discussion. There's even some general off-topic uh, collection share. People share their collections here. Link shares. If you come across any new links that you want other people to check out, uh, swaps or trade, sales chat, presentation discussions, memes, and other suggestions. Discord is not for everyone, so I don't recommend everyone out there go ahead and get onto Discord. If you're not comfortable with this kind of platform or fast-paced, 
um, instant messaging, then I would stay away from it. But if you are familiar with Discord, then you should definitely get on this channel. And if you're curious about uh, Discord, if you think you'll be comfortable with this, definitely try it as well. I recommend it. The community is great. They're friendly, fun, and energetic. It's important to note that there is a wide range of philatelic skill level on this channel. Um, from the extreme beginner that they've picked up a single postage stamp and are now asking questions about it, to the expert. So your skill in philately does not matter at all. I think there is an age requirement, uh, 13 years or older. But um, yeah, like I said, if you're interested in this, definitely check it out and have a lot of fun. I, uh, I may or may not have already said that I have a lot of mail. Uh, so let's go through 10 items again and see what people have sent me. First item comes from Anna in Russia. I don't get a lot of Russian mail, so this is exciting. Anna sent me a postcard from 1976 celebrating the Great October Revolution, as well as a couple stamps, one of which was issued for Europa 2021. The Europa theme for 2021 is Endangered National Wildlife. And uh, here we have, I think this is an armor leopard, which is native to southern Russia and northern China. This year's Europa theme might be one of my favorites. Also, she sent me a COVID stamp from Russia. And this is a cute little illustration featuring a healthcare worker, hospital, ambulance, even a little medical helicopter in the distance. And it's honoring the national healthcare efforts. You can see the reference to COVID-19 on the wall of the hospital. That's pretty neat. Thank you, Anna. And along those lines, I've got another COVID stamp that I want to call out now. This one, we've already received something from Beck's Vintage Post in Australia and um, she sent over another item. She sent over the set of stamps that were issued in February this year uh, from Australia, Frontline Heroes, and I have an FDC now thanks to uh, Beck's Vintage Post. So check this out. As the title states, Frontline Heroes, it doesn't just honor the healthcare workers, but of course they are present here. You get to see other people that are on the front line, including military and first responders, as well as those supporting delivery of groceries, and I believe that's a male person in the background, as well as your grocery workers, and there's another Zoom call. So we've got a few Zoom calls on stamps if you've been following along in these episodes. But um, this set is a beautiful set from Australia on, like I said, a first day cover. We can see that it's got the hand sanitizer and face masks on the envelope. And we can see that the first day postmark has that COVID symbol and was postmarked in Canberra on the 16th of February. Oh, and one more thing, the cover that was sent from Australia has been hit with a pen. Even the Australians are not immune to the dreaded pen cancel. It hits us all right through Queen Elizabeth II's head as well. And even the Frontline Hero stamp got hit. Thank you, Mr. Postman. Well, not for the pen cancel. Okay, now this one's a little different. This one is actually coming from a postal service that reached out to me and sent me stamps uh, from the country of Kyrgyzstan or the Kyrgyz Republic. Now, this postal service is one of two that operate in the country and it's a very unique and interesting and I actually don't understand it completely, but maybe you can help me uh, figure it out. But in Kyrgyzstan, there is two operators for the entire region, postal operators. This is different from a country such as Andorra uh, that has two operators, but they're from two different countries that are helping out Andorra, like France and Spain, or Bosnia and Herzegovina that has three postal operators, uh, one for each region. This is really a shared service between two postal operators that are dedicated to the country of the Kyrgyz Republic. Now, this particular service is Kyrgyz Express. 
And uh, from the stamps I've seen in the past, they're usually quite stunning works of art, either photography or illustrations or designs. Okay, well, here we go. Right off the bat, some COVID-19 stamps. This is actually quite brilliant. I think this is a snow leopard saying no to the COVID virus. You can actually tell that this is a Kyrgyz Express stamp because they always have the logo somewhere on it. So you'll see that Kyrgyz Express post on the top left here. This is a great mini sheet. Also notice the plus 50 in the corner. So you've got the value 150 plus 50. Therefore, we are talking about a semi-postal. And you can see at the bottom here, surcharge in aid of www.deti.kg. No idea what that is. Let's look that up. It's a fund to help the children. It's supporting children. So there we go. Um, these are excellent. Then we've got several other stamps here featuring people. I recognize Beethoven among others some chess stamps here we go year of the ox stamps some beautiful scenery and more um, like i said they always have stunning stamps i will put the link to their website in the video description of course if you understand a little bit more about why there are two different postal services in uh, kyrgyzstan please let me know i find it very interesting and perhaps that's something we can talk about in another video but thank you to everyone working at the kyrgyz express postal service if you work for a postal service in another country and you want to send me their stamps uh please i'm more than happy to check them out and of course add your stamps to my collection so thank you very much look at this this is pretty clever this is from brazil uh, sent to me by Victor and the stamps are sign language. It's Brazilian sign language either that's BSL or known commonly as Libras and it's spelling out my last name B E C K He sent me a pamphlet for these sign language stamps. They were issued in 2020 and um, it goes on to say there is no universal sign language shared by all deaf in the world. In the countries where they are found, these sign languages are the result of interactions between deaf people in their collectives. Each country develops actions for their respective sign languages. That's right. So in the United States, for instance, I'm more familiar with ASL, American Sign Language. There is um, a British Sign Language as well as Australia, Auslan, LSCH is in Chile, and like we've already pointed out, Libras is in Brazil. By launching a series of stamps with the alphabet in Libras, the Correas Brazil became a strong supporter of the struggle of the Brazilian deaf social movement. There's something, of course, I only realized later on is that there are different sign languages per country. Um, Libras in Brazil and, you know, ASL here in the United States. So, um, thank you. Well, that's ASL. I don't know. I don't know what uh, Libras thank you is. Here's a fun one. This one is from Enrique uh, in San Diego. And Enrique <laughs> writes to me that this is probably his first fan letter I've really written, except one to Kelly Clarkson that he never heard back from. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, well, I'm sorry about that, but here I am replying to you. Uh, anyways, I'm a zoo volunteer at San Diego Zoo in downtown San Diego, Balboa Park. It's now the San Diego Zoo Wildlife Alliance. More information at San Diego Zoo Wildlife Alliance.org. I'll check that out. He also writes to me saying that they've been giving away the old stuff from the zoo because they are rebranding it. And these paper clips became available and he took them and knew exactly who to send them to. And you gotta check these paper clips out. Rhinos. This is a little rhino paperclip, a boatload of rhino paperclips. You will never need another paperclip again, ever in your life. 
enjoy. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Enrique. He also writes that he loves binging on the vlogs, hashtag flatly and other videos. Uh, considers himself a non-serious philatelist, although he does collect Spanish monarchs and several Spain stamps. Well, Enrique, you made my day. Also, your image of the rhino uh, wearing an Exploring Stamps t-shirt and drinking a cup of coffee along with the new US uh, espresso stamps. I, uh, I really couldn't ignore this one. <laughs> this was really well done. Thank you again, Enrique. You'll see that a lot of people are sending me items with rhinos, whether it's coins, stamps, or in this case, paper clips. And that's because I am a collector of rhino stamps. It's one of my topics that I like to collect. And I did that episode in season three where I explored rhino stamps and got to learn about their endangered status, which had a bit of an effect on me. And since then I've been connected with a rhino sanctuary in Southern Africa that I donate to. I'll put that link in the video description as well as started collecting a specific stamp which features a rhino named Jackson. Now, that episode I explored this stamp briefly, where I showed that the stamp design was taken from a photograph at the London Zoo, which features to be what is considered the last Northern Sumatran rhino. Uh, well, there have been sightings since, but nobody's really confirmed it. So the rhino is said to be extinct. And since that episode, I've now also learned that the rhino had a name, it was Jackson, and he had a very sad story where he was captured and taken away from his mom uh, and sent to the London Zoo. It's a, it's a long story, I'm, I'm paraphrasing here, but he then spent the rest of his life at the London Zoo where he later died. After his death, Jackson was preserved by a taxidermist and later survived a bombing in World War II, but his ear got singed. Anyway, it's a very sad story and I've been collecting those stamps. I actually have quite a few of them now and I'm enjoying finding them used and new copies as well as any overprints and so on. I'm exploring them as I go. So anyway, that's a little bit of a background of why I am clearly getting a lot of Rhino stuff and I really love it. So thank you very much. Next up, all the way from France. This is from Fred who sent me some mail art that's actually quite interesting because when you open it, it's the exact same thing as the cover. And that kind of threw me off a little bit. I had to really process it for a few seconds because I was like, hey, how did he get the exact same image with the labels as well as the stamps? First, I thought it was a bit of magic. Only thing that it really is truly missing is the actual postmark in the center here, sent in the 19th of February, 2021. But uh, clearly the theme for this art is wind, air, mail, right? So we've got clouds blowing dandelions, we've got dandelion stamp, as well as wind turbines, wings and air mail. Now this is actually part of a postal art competition. I've opened up uh, the artwork itself and it tells me that this postal art competition consists of an illustration on an envelope that will travel by post 10 words over the water, offering this year by the general delegation for the French language and the languages of France. And so that's where the themes are coming from. Now the artist Fred writes that his goal is to promote international postal art, although it already exists, he chose to share it with a person for whom fun philately is a constant priority. So I would name Graham Beck and his excellent YouTube channel, hashtag philately exploring stamps where postal art has a place in its broadcasts or in its developments on the subject of philately in general. Really honored Fred, this is really cool. I have to do something with this, maybe frame it or something because it's really special. Uh, so thank you, I hope you did really well in the art competition um, because you deserve it. It's just fantastic and um, a big surprise. So. Thank you so much. Okay, next up I have a couple of letters that I want to speak to together because uh, they're related to a discussion we had much earlier on uh, last year about COVID-19 stamps and the questionable stamps that were issued for Sierra Leone featuring the penny black and a face mask on them. Now, we had learned in that episode that countries contract an organization such as Stamperia that produces these questionable stamps for their clients and then sells them. And what bothers me about this, maybe it doesn't bother you, is that the topics and the subject matter on the stamps usually is not related at all to the country itself 
and seems to not even be sold from the country. It comes from this uh, Stamperia or the IGPC, which is the Intergovernmental Philatelic Corporation. And these two organizations, as an example, continue to produce stamps that they try and sell to the philatelic market. They're making money off of us. Now, some people think that's okay, and that's great, and some people get irritated by it. I know a lot of collectors, they get irritated by these stamps that they find flooding the philatelic market. And without getting into further detail, a question that I asked during the episode was, would you be able to use those stamps in real life? And get an envelope to go through the postal system? Would you be able to use those stamps printed by Stamperia or the IGPC and place them on an envelope and go to the Sierra Leone and mail an actual envelope? Or would it be rejected? Well, I've received two letters that speak to such an experience. One is from Peter in the UK, and the answer to his knowledge and experience is no. The stamps that they produce are rarely available in local post offices for general use. He has been to Ghana several times and on one occasion covered an envelope with a nice thematic series for another collector friend of his. He went to the local post office. He was told that they've never seen those stamps before and that if he wanted to mail it, he'd have to pay for the proper rate with real postage stamps. The Ghana Postal Service produce their own issues which they use on real mail. So that's exactly what I feared. You may not be able to purchase these stamps in the actual country itself, that they have their own stamps, and that they would reject um, you trying to mail an envelope covered in these IGPC or Stamperia stamps. I have another one. This one was actually sent to me via UN mail, and that's kind of important here because when I read the letter, this came to me from Frank in Bangui, which is in the Central African Republic. He writes that he uses United Nations mail for most purposes, but since I had asked the question, he decided to obtain the penny black COVID stamps on eBay and tried to use them to send me a letter. The fact that I am now receiving this letter through UN Postal System should tell you how successful his attempt was. The person at the post office told him that you could only use their stamps and explained that the company that issued the penny black COVID supposedly was doing so for Central African Postal Service. While he did seem a bit unsure of himself, he did not want to accept the letter. He did show me the stamps that they are using now and I can report that there are some recent stamps that do not look like Stamperia stamps. I am enclosing some of them for you. I hope that one day you are able to do a program on Stamperia and other producers of stamps colloquially called wallpaper. <laughs> so yes, and he sent me some of the stamps that are actually being used by Central African Republic, which are way less glamorous than the ones produced by Stamperia. Like literally here are three pigs in the mud. But these are real stamps that they're using in the country to send and receive mail. This was super interesting, Frank and Peter. Um, this really does make me want to investigate more into the world of Stamperia and the IGPC. Actually, the IGPC isn't too far away from me. Um, I think it's like in New York or New Jersey, so I should actually look into them. It is interesting and some of you like I said actually don't mind that they print these stamps but a lot of philatelists are really irritated by this because it is a way of making a profit off of stamp collectors and it's not even a real stamp. So thank you Frank in the Central African Republic as well as Peter in the UK. You both confirmed my fear that those Stamperia and IGPC stamps are not real stamps. Hmm. Okay, so this one is from Jonathan, who writes to me, where's Jonathan from? Massachusetts. This one is from Jonathan in Massachusetts. He writes to me that he's a 26 year old letter carrier for the United States Postal Service. He enjoys the channel and finds it super cool and found it when he started getting into stamp collecting. For about five years, he's been seeing cool stamps on letters. His topic, he guesses, is basically anything to do with post office, but especially mail trucks. And so now he looks for post office related stamps like trucks, planes, offices, mail carriers, routes, and so on. You can see some of the stamps he sent my way. These ones are from Swaziland. Today we know it as Eswatini, but there is a mail runner, post office mail truck, mail sorting office, and looks like a cable car, like a ropeway conveying mail at Bulembu. Hmm. 
He also sends some of the stamps that got him into uh, stamp collecting, which is the Jamaica UN truck and the Jamaica UN vehicles. Some really neat stamps. He also sent me an actual little mail truck, which I should put with this little guy here. And um, United States Postal Service patch. Neat, thank you very much, Jonathan. He also sent me these glasses from the Macho Mailman. This is a guy he works with that has a social media page where people all over the country that he sent glasses to wear them and take a picture in front of post offices or on vacation and it's pretty cool. I'll check out the Macho Mailman on social media. Excellent. This was really nice of you, Jonathan. Love the glasses too. I think it's my style. Uh, speaking of summer, several of you have emailed me an article about mailing flip-flops or coconuts through the postal service by just applying a stamp and writing an address on it. That's great, but why aren't you mailing me a flip-flop or a coconut through the postal system to prove this? That would be really cool. Um, just let you know, I'm very interested to see if the flip-flop or the coconut makes it through here. The rule is, of course, that you cannot put it in a box and just mail me a flip-flop or coconut in a box. The stamp needs to be applied directly to the flip-flop or the coconut and sent just directly through the mail. Anybody watching in Hawaii, please send me a coconut or anywhere else where you can and um, a flip-flop. I think it'll be really cool and it's summertime. I probably need some flip-flops. Maybe I'll get a right and a left and uh, the right size and I can uh, uh, use them. I'm just curious to see who's brave enough to take a flip-flop and a coconut into the post office. I think that'd be funny. Anyway, yeah, like I said, I think it'll be really cool and let's see what comes my way. I got like three more and I think I've gone over ten. I'm not sure. Uh, you guys aren't counting though. I'm pretty sure of it. So anyway, this one is from Germany, sent to me by Nils, who writes to me that his name's Nils and he's a collector from Germany. Recently was gifted 18 albums of stamps, which is a bit overwhelming, I can imagine. He says that uh, the channel motivated him to get back into collecting again. Have you noticed the three cent stamps on the envelope? So check these out. You can see a number of stamps, but mainly these three and two cent stamps. He chose to send these because they have an interesting backstory. They were introduced when the postage went up from 55 cents to 58 cents and they became wildly unpopular. Collectors all over the country complained that no effort was put into the making. While the two cent stamp looks very similar, it wasn't unpopular at all. The three cent stamp was then put to a poll and officially declared the worst looking stamp Germany has ever made. That is a fantastic story, Nils. I'm actually told by several German collectors that I know that they are quite disappointed in Germany stamps over the last 10, 15 years or so. Uh, they find them boring. And I'm curious, are there other Germans or German collectors out there that agree with that? Are Germany stamps boring today? I'm gonna to take a bit of a neutral stance here so that I don't get into any trouble, but I do see a lot of simple flowers for definitives. These two and threes don't help. And you know, I'm not gonna say anymore, but it's kind of weird to think that people would claim that Germany stamps are boring because right next door to Germany is Austria that issues stamps on toilet paper, ski tips, and all sorts of other crazy materials. So maybe the German Postal Service needs to take a day trip to Austria and uh, check out how their postal service works. I, I'm, like I said, I'm not, I'm not gonna make any more claims. I wanna hear from you. Do you think German stamps are boring in recent years? Uh, I'm just curious. Nils also sent me a number of German stamps that date from the 80s and way further back, as well as a postcard. So thank you very much. These are really neat. Here's another one from Australia. This time, none of the stamps were canceled, not even pen canceled, uh, thankfully. But this is from Graham in Australia with, I think, the better spelling, A-E-M-E -E versus the A-H-A-M. Anyway, Graham writes to me saying that he loves the channel and he keeps learning about stamps all the time. Please keep going. He really enjoys it and he tells all his friends. He sent me some really cool stamps on the cover as we saw, as well as a full strip of the cricket stamps from 1977. These are excellent. He also included the Waltzing Matilda stamps and the Half Penny Green Rue, which is our first stamp, not the Penny Red. Um, 
So this is an interesting situation where in Australia, the first stamp that they actually issued was the one penny red rue. But weeks later, I can't remember the exact time, that they then issued a lower value, which was the half penny green. Catalogs typically list stamps from the same year in the order of value, regardless of when they were issued. And we saw this with the airmail stamps when I did the episode on the inverted Jenny, where they issued three airmail stamps in one year, but they actually listed them in order of value in the catalogs. So Graham, you're right in the sense that Australia's first stamp in the catalogs will be a half penny green, but the first stamp that was ever issued was a one penny red. It's very interesting. You have sent some fantastic stamps, Graham, so I really appreciate it, including the half penny green rue. I don't actually have one, so this is my first one. So much appreciated. Finally, I have something from Canada, which I was pretty excited about because when I opened it, I saw that this is the insulin set that was issued in 2021 this year. Now, if you think I love coffee, I really love insulin because the stuff keeps me alive. I'm a type one diabetic and when I saw these stamps, I got really excited because they also taught me something about insulin that I've been taking for like 20 years. I really didn't know that insulin was invented or discovered in Canada, Toronto to be precise. And this year marks the 100th anniversary of its discovery. It was discovered by Dr. Banting and the stamps include an insulin bottle as well as Dr. Banting's notes. And the first day cover, which was also included, um, this was sent to me by Jake, by the way. Thank you, Jake. The first day cover that Jake sent to me also includes letters or covers that were being sent to the doctor himself. You can see like this one cover says to the doctor who cures diabetes in Toronto, Ontario um, and several others. The discovery of insulin was a major milestone in medical history uh, because diabetics, juvenile diabetics, type 1 diabetics would just die. There was no cure for it. And upon the discovery and successful testing of insulin immediately allowed diabetics to live a much longer life. Today, millions of people with diabetes continue to be treated with this life-saving medicine. So I'm glad I wasn't born over a hundred years ago because I wouldn't be here doing videos about stamps. Well, it's, it's, yeah. So these are really great stamps. Also note that the traffic lights in the margin, traffic lights is a term used by Philatelist that uh, show the colored dots that make up the colors of what a particular stamp has. These are not dots in this case, they're little test tubes, which I think is, um, very cool. Anyway, the letter is from Jake. As I said, he says, Hey Graham, I hope all is well with you and yours. I just wanted to start by saying that I'm a big fan of Exploring Stamps channel and is one of the main reasons why he became interested in philately. Your video in particular about the different dead countries to collect led me to focus my collection on dead countries. And in honor of that, I've enclosed a few Newfoundland, Newfoundland, Newfoundland. Am I saying this right now? Because I got yelled at in the comments by Canadians that I mispronounced Newfin Newfoundland. Newfoundland is what I want to say, but I think it's Newfoundland. Anyway, he writes that he sent me these insulin stamps because he saw I posted something about them on Instagram. And he also sent me a stamp depicting Terry Fox, who is a personal hero of his who attempted to run across Canada to raise money for cancer research in the 1980s. If you don't know the story of Terry Fox, it is a very inspirational one. And I will include a link to a podcast from Stamp Stories, uh, which taught me about Terry Fox and the stamps issued uh, in honor of him. So definitely check that out. It's a fantastic story. It's sad, but it is very inspirational as I've mentioned. Anyway, he hopes that I find this interesting and to please keep up the good work. It's really cool seeing you bring philately into the 21st century. Very cool, Jake. Thank you so much. And I'm so happy to have these insulin stamps. They really mean a lot to me. I'm going to stop right there. Thank you everyone for sending items my way. I really enjoy learning from these items as well as from you. I hope that all of you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please hit that like button and um, make sure that you're subscribed. I always leave a number of links in the video description. So also check those out. As always, thank you for watching and happy exploring. Again?